So the second part of section 4.5 uh, is going to be talking about writing equations of sine and cosine graphs from from the graph. So we're going to write the equation while looking at the graph. Now it's important to note that uh, we need to be told is it a sine or cosine function because since both of these functions are um, periodic functions and they you know they repeat themselves um, there could be multiple correct answers you know I'm going to go back to what we did yesterday and looking at the sine and cosine graphs here and we can tell that if we took this cosine graph here okay here's the cosine or sorry sine graph if we take this sine graph right here and we translate that to the right well that looks just like this graph now it looks like the cosine graph so if we take this sine graph and translate it to the right you could say oh that's that's a a, a cosine graph or if we took it and translate it to the left you say well that could be a cosine graph and the same thing is true going from a co looking at a cosine graph here, you know, and translating that left or right, that will give us what could be what will look like a sine graph. So without knowing if we're looking at a sine or cosine graph, we would have multiple answers. And even within that, you could have multiple answers because we could always shift over by a whole period, and that would be the same thing as well. So let's look at these. Um, so example one, write the equation in the form uh, cosine x plus d. So there's two important things to note about what the directions say. There is no horizontal shifting to these problems. Um, also, the period for all of these should be uh, 2 pi because there's no b value. So we're going to be trying to calculate the amplitude and the midline here. Um, I'm still going to show you how you can figure out what the period is based off of this, based off of these graphs. Um, so that way, when you do your assignment, you're able to, uh, you know, tackle anything that comes your way. So the first thing I want to do is identify what these tick marks go. It says the scale on the axis is pi over two. So for all these problems, each of these tick marks here is pi over 2. So to calculate the period, you know, I'm going to go from the top to the top and say, what is this distance here? Well, if each of these tick marks is a pi over 2, we have, you know, 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. So this distance here is 2 pi. So the period equals 2 pi, so 2 pi equals 2 pi over b, so our b value must be 1, which is what I was saying earlier that, you know, based on the directions, the period for all of these would be 2 pi, but that's how you would figure it out. So now we need to figure out our a value, our amplitude. So the amplitude is going to be the largest, the maximum y value, minus uh, the smallest y value over 2, and we take the absolute value of that. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 minus the smallest y value is 1 over 2. Right? And that gets us uh, 4 over 2, which is 2. And now figure out where our midline is. So our midline is going to be exactly halfway between the minimum and maximum. Now, yes, you could do... Um, d is equal to 5 plus 1 over 2, which gives you 3. Or you could count and say, okay, if this is my max and this is my minimum, what's halfway in between? Well, that'll be right here, which is y equals 3. Either way is okay. So now we can write our equation. y equals our amplitude was 2, so 2 cosine of x plus our midline, which is 3. Now, if you want to put parentheses, parentheses around the, co the x to note that 
the plus three does not go with the cosine, uh, you can do that. But it is implied that unless you see parentheses, those things are separate. This would combine them together. But they're separate, so we can leave them like that. But this is okay, too. Now, the last thing we need to note, however, is that our cosine graph is starting at the bottom here. It's not starting at the top. So we need to have a negative in front. So it's going to be y equals negative 2 cosine of x plus 3. All right, now letter B. Again, the period is going to be 2 pi, but you could always look from here to here. And, you know, pi over 2 is our um, tick marks. Let's say, okay, this distance is 2 pi. So our period is still 2, uh, two pi, or b value is 1. Now we have to figure out our amplitude. a equals the absolute value of 1, our maximum, minus our minimum is 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5 over 2. And that gets us positive 3. So a is 3, and then our d value, again, we could count. Uh, if you wanted to, say, okay, we go down 1, 2, 3, now 1, 2, 3, our y value is negative 2. Because we know that amplitude, um, when we graphed them yesterday, we went from our midline and we went up to the amplitude and then down to the negative amplitude. So we're just kind of going in reverse here. So y equals... Um, this is a cosine graph, so 3 cosine of x minus 2. So example C looks a little bit um, confusing because our amplitude is small. So here's 1, then here's y equals 2. Well, our y value looks to be, our minimum looks to be negative point, or positive 0. 0.5, and our maximum looks to be positive 1.5. So our amplitude is going to be 1.5 minus 0. 0.5 over 2, which gives us 1 half. Okay, so our amplitude is 1 half, and then our, our d value, our axis, um, you could say, well, it's going to be halfway between those two points, um, 1.5 and 0.5, which will be 1. So that y equals negative 1 half cosine of x plus 1. That would be our function. So it's not too difficult when we don't have a horizontal shift and we know that our period is going to be 2 pi. But now let's look at example two where we're talking about sine graphs. Now these sine graphs don't have a vertical shift, but they have a horizontal shift along with a B value that may or may not be one. And remember that when we do our horizontal shift, we're going to write it in the form by factoring out the B so that's how we're going to um, write these problems. So this first one, uh, again, the scale on the axis is pi over 2. So each of these tick marks right here represents pi over 2. And it's a sine graph, so we know it starts at 0, 0. This one um, doesn't have a horizontal shift because we're starting at 0, 0. And we know sine would start at that, that midline here. So our amplitude is going to be the maximum, which is 3, minus the minimum, negative 3 over 2, which is going to give us 6 over 2 or 3. So that's our A value. Now our B value. To calculate our B value, we first need to figure out our period. So right here, at 0, 0, and here, that represents one period because our um, y values are both 0 and our graph is going down. 
And the reason I chose this point is because starting from zero is going to be easier. I could have done these two points, but those don't appear at a nice tick mark for us. Um, and we had to do some, some, do some subtraction. So this distance here is two tick marks or pi. So remember, period equals 2 pi over b. Well, if our period is pi, that's 2 pi over b. So we multiply both sides by b, we get pi times b equals 2 pi, and then we divide everything by pi, our b value is 2. And again, the reason why we know the period is um, pi is because the function repeats itself in this interval here, which is two tick marks, and we're told that the scale is pi over two, so two of those would be two pi over two or one pi. So when we write our equation, we have y equals three sine of two x. However, because our function starts to go down after at the center or the midline or at the origin, it must be a negative sine, uh, negative three sine, and that notes that we are going down. Then letter B over here, our amplitude, okay, we have our maximum of 1 and our minimum of negative 1. So amplitude equals 1 minus 1 minus negative 1 over 2, uh, which is going to give us 1. Now we have to calculate the period. Now this one does look a bit more confusing because our critical values don't look like to be right at our tick marks. Like here's one of our x-intercepts there. Here's another um, x-intercept here and here. Um, and our maxes are not lining up with those tick marks. But it looks to be about halfway in between. Well, if each tick mark was pi over uh, 2, then halfway would be pi over 4. So our graph has been shifted right, shifted right, pi over 4. Because remember, our we normally start at 0, 0, and now we're starting, our, our point is here at pi over 4. All right, so we figured out our shift, now we have to figure out the period. Now, to do that, again, we can look at the minimums or the maximums. Um, if we look at this minimum and that minimum, we got to figure out the distance between the two. Well, this is going to be negative pi over 4, because it's halfway here. And then we have pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, this would be 2 pi over 2, but we're halfway between that, so it's going to be 7 pi over 4. So then our distance between that, our period, is going to be 7 pi over 4 minus negative pi over 4, 8 pi over 4, which is 2 pi. So if our period is 2 pi, 2 pi equals 2 pi over b, well, that means b has got to be equal to 1. So y equals, we don't need to write the 1 for sine, so sine of x minus pi over 4 in parentheses uh, to note that it is a horizontal shift. Yeah, so when we have these horizontal shifts, it does become a little bit confusing because then you have to kind of extrapolate a little bit and say, okay, well, I know the tick marks are just pi over 2, but these points don't really line up with that. Well, Halfway between 0 and pi over 2 is pi over 4. Okay, then our last one here. You might say, well, this looks like a cosine graph because we're starting at the bottom. However, the directions say that these are all sine graphs. So that means this graph has been shifted um, left or right. And depending on how you interpret the shift, would de depend on how your graph uh, would be, or your function be written. Because if this point was shifted, you know, if we shifted back this way, okay, we are shifting left pi over two, but then it would be a negative sign because our graph goes down. However, 
if we shifted to the right pi over four pi over two units, it would be positive sign because our graph is going up. So I'm, I like to stay with positive values if I can. So I'm going to say that this is a right shift. Now, again, you could say this is a left shift, and you would still be correct as long as you have a negative sign instead of a positive sign. So we're going to be right shift pi over 2. And again, we know it's pi over 2 because each of these tick marks, we are told, represents pi over 2. Now our amplitude. A equals the max is 2 minus negative 2 over 2, which is going to give us 2. So our A value is 2. Now our period. So again, here's, a, here's our minimum. Here's another minimum. What's this distance? Well, that's going to be 2 pi. So our B value is going to be 2 pi over 2 pi, which is 1. Um, so you could write it that way, or you could say 2 pi equals um, 2 pi over b, and then multiply both sides, and solve it that way. Um, but another way you could do it is your b value, your b value will always be 2 pi divided by the period. that will give you b. In this case, it was 1 again. So our function y equals 2 sine of x minus pi over 2 in parentheses because we shifted it right pi over 2. And like I was saying, if you wanted to shift it left pi over 2, you would have to make it a negative 2 in front. Either one's OK. Um, so yeah, writing equations from the graphs can be complicated again because not everything lines up as nice as we hope sometimes. Uh, we just have to then think and see uh, what makes sense given the information we have. Uh, so thanks for watching the video. Make sure to like it and subscribe.